dressing. Dressing. Oh, French dressing. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm AJ Jacobs, and my current obsession is puzzles. And that has given birth to my new podcast, The Puzzler. Something about Mary Poppins? Exactly. <laughs> this is fun. You can get your daily puzzle nuggets delivered straight to your ears. Listen to The Puzzler every day on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Hillary Clinton, back with a new season of my podcast, You and Me Both. On this show, I'll be talking to people I admire about one of my favorite subjects, getting things done. We'll hear from folks in positions of power, like Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries, but also writers and actors and really anyone who keeps doing the work. So please join me. Listen to You and Me Both on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What's up? This is Big Loon. Check out my podcast, It's Up There. Each and every Monday, It's Up There podcast brings a conversation for supporters and business leaders of the culture. From the podcast, business, music, and entertainment deals, we have an in-depth dialogue with a level of understanding for everyone. It's Up There podcast sees through the smoke and mirrors within the industry while delivering a perspective that's one of a kind. Laugh, cry, and soak in game with every episode. Listen to It's Up There podcast on the Black Effect Podcast Network. iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What's up, y'all? It's me, Eric, and we are back with another edition of Bombing, where I talk with friends, comedians, musicians, and other creative people about their worst moments on stage and getting their soul shattered by a live audience. This man has been with me since day one of my career. He did the stand-up circuit and eventually became my creative partner, Dan Curry. What can I say about him? He is a force to be reckoned with. Boy, oh boy, did we wreck some rooms and stage time. Uh, he um, is my writing partner on The Eric Andre Show. We got a book coming out together. He's so one of the funniest guys, but probably the hardest I've ever laughed in my life is with Dan Curry. By my side. Helped me with Bad Trip. Wrote on Bad Trip. He's written on everything I've done. The wickedly talented one and only Dan Curry. As always, please subscribe to the podcast to get new episodes every week. Rated five stars. And on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to Big Money Players Diamond to get an exclusive clip from my chat with Dan Curry. Plus ad-free episodes weekly. Uh, let's fucking dominate. Bombing. Bombing. Bombing with Eric Andre. Okay. Yeah. I'm sitting here with none other than that. lovely, gorgeous, smooth, silky, vanilla skin. <laughs> Dare I say a delicious a little creamsicle before my very, very, before your very, very eyes. eyes. His liver's in great shape. It's crisp. He doesn't hit the sauce like others. Like I used to? Like he used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I drink less than six drinks a week. But I keep it to two or three. I'm fucking great. Yeah, you can't be like. Well, what about when you were like in your early 20s? You were like, I didn't count. You were like, pow, pow, pow. I didn't count my boozes. <laughs> I didn't even have a bottom. I like, got an app once to be like, how much do I drink? And I like, actually, I will be honest. And the answer is more than I thought I did and way more than the CDC says I should. And then I was <laughs> like, I need to monitor this. Ladies and gentlemen, you know him as Kraft Punk, executive producer of the Eric Andre Show, head writer. And the Air Country Show. A sassy, sassy, sassy boy who kind of gets a little silly for fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for doing my... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Dan. Dan. Yes. Beelzebub Curry. That's my name. Thanks for reading it exactly <laughs> as I like my intro. Exactly, exactly like you emailed your, it to me this perfect, morning. <laughs> a perfect reading of how I like to be... This is a podcast about bombing. Yeah. It's about the worst you've ever done on stage, the biggest you've ever biggity bombed, the worst bomb you've ever seen, and the most hammered you've ever been on stage. Okay. The bombing and hammering- Are one and the same? Are one and the same. But no, I bombed a bunch of times. What's the most fucked up shit you've ever the most seen? most fucked up thing I've ever seen. Can we use real names? Can you beep it in case? Uh, uh, you can do whatever you want. I think you were there. <laughs> you were either, you were like adjacent to this yeah. or you were there, but it was just probably, this is a while ago, but uh, we were doing some showcase in the East Village 
and there was this guy. <laughs> oh boy! Oh and boy! <laughs> who I never met was hosting the show. And and the I, show was like a mafia kind of show, right? It was like a. It wasn't a mafia show. He was kind, apparently he came from mafia shows. He's like he kills with the with the wise guys. So whatever. <laughs> That was, he was like, with wise guys, he fucking shreds it. <laughs> and he was this, like, tough guy. He was tough as shit, like, terrifying. Like, you could tell, like, he probably did some dirt. And, uh, but he was, he was also gay, but intimidated. He was like, I love those little Asian kids. Yum. Like, that was his thing. That let's, was beep, his... let's beep this guy's name. The more we're talking about it, <laughs> just beep the name. But yeah, you can change his name. You can change or we his can name. lift it up. His name was fucking Silly Pete. <laughs> <laughs> he so, was like jacked. He was jacked. very like butch. Yeah. But he was out of the closet. He was out of the closet. Like very out of the closet. But you didn't know it meeting him. But he was old school. He was like old school and jacked, but he's like, hey, I'm gay. What the fuck? What are you gonna do about it? He was kind of a mind blowing guy. He was a mind blowing guy. He, he was nice. I remember him being nice to me. Oh, behind the scenes. I only I, nice. I, I have a wisp of a memory of him. He was like, What can I do for you? You know, he was real yeah. cordial. And then we had this packed room. But he had a crazy opener. His, right? cra his crazy opening joke was um <laughs> Okay, it's a pack room. Paint us a picture. All right, all right. So we're here's a paintbrush. Say let's give this there's a hundred people in it. It's packed, it's tight, it's New York where, City. Where are you in, midtown in Manhattan? East Village. East Village, okay. East Village. Packed, tight. Some what? venue that I don't think I ever went to again. It was like a Friday one night. Friday night, everyone just wants to laugh. Okay, they want to have a good time. Are there other comics that have gone up yet? Other or he's comics, the first? nobody. We're Nobody's all, gone up. Yet. We're all sitting in the back. So he's the opener. He's the opener, and he gets up on stage, and there's these two women sitting in the front row, oh, and he yeah. says to the woman, "He goes, hey, lady, uh, close your legs. I don't want you to be queefed over here." <laughs> Opening joke. It's not he, even a joke. He, it's not even a joke. He just went right to like, I don't want to be dealing with queefing. And he goes, because I'm gay and I fuck Asian, young, hairless Asian dudes. And then everyone, he lost everybody. Like immediately, everyone was like, Whoa! everyone was like up in arms. It was just like, you filled the room with people just trying to have a nice night. <laughs> and he opened, and he opened with like, and he got like personal about it. It's like, I'm sorry, why? You don't know, like, it's true. It's true, and he like he like doubled and tripled down on Queefin, and it was like an Oof. unbelievable. So he walked up on stage and just went, "Hey, close your legs! I don't want you Queefin while I'm yeah. on stage." And she was like, "Oh, come on!" And everyone, they were they just felt awe, and they just like turned into themselves, like, "Oh, jeez!" And then he jumped, doubled, tripled. They, oh, they, he kept going. To like the crowd works, like, "Come on, man!" He's like, "Whoa, what? Do you know how queefs work?" And you're like, "Come on." <laughs> Come on, can we leave the topic? Oh, he just dug a deeper so, and deeper hole. It was hole. so alienating. Oh, my <laughs> lord above. And then when I got up on stage, I think I was like first or second up, I just accused him of stealing my opening joke. <laughs> you know, and people liked that. And yeah. then I just griped about it. In, uh, in the cadence. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. What but night. I never saw him again. Yeah, I never saw yeah, him I never before. saw him again. Never he, like, saw him again. He, like, came in hot, and then he vanished. He was in and out. Yeah. And I was like, who is that man? Yeah. And, I, and I've and i even Googled him, and, it's, and there's no trace. There's no trace. There's, no, there's like, a MySpace, but it's, like, all, there's no it's trace. all ones and O's when you click on it. <laughs> they tried to delete him. He left him. without a trace. He, he just vanished. He might be dead. People die. People in stand-up. Like people in the mafia die. People in the mafia. People in the stand up. But that was that was that was the thing. It's like because like you got to see him in front of like wise guys. He kills it. But I'm like I don't I don't want that life. I don't know. Man. I don't want that life. Bobby, Bobby with Eric Andre. Something about Mary Poppins. Something about Mary Poppins. <laughs> exactly. Oh man, this is fun. I'm AJ Jacobs, and I am an author and a journalist, and I tend to get obsessed with stuff. And my current obsession is puzzles. And that has given birth to my new podcast, The Puzzler. Dressing. Dressing. Oh, French dressing. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. We are living in the golden age of puzzles, and now you can get your daily puzzle nuggets delivered straight to your ears for 10 minutes or less every day on The Puzzler, short and sweet. I thought to myself, I bet I know what this is, and now I definitely know what this is. This is so weird. This is fun. Let's try this one. <laughs> 
<laughs> Listen to The Puzzler every day on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. That's awful, and I should have seen it coming. I'm Paul Muldoon, a poet who over the past several years had the good fortune to spend time with one of the world's greatest songwriters, Sir Paul McCartney. We talked through more than 150 tracks from McCartney's songbook. And while we did, we recorded our conversations. Yesterday. I mean, the fact that I dreamed the song yesterday leads me to believe that it's not just quite as cut and dried as we think it is. And now you can listen to our conversations in our new podcast, McCartney, A Life in Lyrics. It was like going back to an old snapshot album, looking back on work I hadn't thought much about for quite a few years. Listen to McCartney, A Life in Lyrics on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Emmy Olea. For as long as I can remember, I've been looking for love. For a while, I was looking in all the wrong places. I try to figure out why I settled for that type of love. And surprise, surprise, it traced a trail of crumbs back to my childhood. My mom's in prison. My dad's out tweaking somewhere under a bridge. But that's just my narrative. If I want the whole story, I have to look outside of myself. So I'm turning to someone who has a very different version of the events of my life. My mom. Maybe by learning her truth, I can get closer to mine as well. When did you realize what my militia did for a living? Probably the time when the DEA agents showed up. I was very attracted to men that had just gone out of prison. At that moment, I fell in love with heroin. This is Crumbs. The show about the things we settle for and the bits of ourselves that make us who we are. Listen to Crumbs Season 2 as part of the My Cultura Podcast Network on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Eric Andre. Dan and I met about 20 years ago yeah. at the Botanica Bar with Hannibal and Josh Filipowski and a bunch of other stand-ups. Yeah. And we, uh, I was homeless at the time. Uh-huh. And you and Josh were doing that show together and then we, uh, we just started growing up. Yeah, with a bunch of people. We used to do that. I liked that room. I had a lot yeah, of fun of there. Yeah, of course. I have a you lot know, of fond memories of that room. A lot of fond memories of the room. I don't remember bombing there because I felt very well, much at home and well, I didn't... Well, like, what about stand-up? What's the worst you ever uh, the worst tanked? I ever tanked at stand-up. Like a fucking show that just like shook you to your core. Shook, shook me it, to my shook core. It, shooketh you to the core. All right, I, I, I'll, I'll start. This was actually my worst one and it had to do with drinking. And I, I don't, I doubt this is the drunkest I, because I used to, before, when I first started stand up, I was like, well, got to have at least two or three beers before I like go up and talk to people. Yeah. That's, that completely changed I, when I watched a video of myself and I was like, I'm, oh, you were like sloppy Joe. Oh, I won't even take a sip of something before I go. <laughs> it's like, like I, I take one sip of alcohol. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think I'm already on the cusp of slurring stone sober. I saw a video of me just hanging out with my friends on my couch this weekend and I was a little like sloppy and I was like, Ugh. that wasn't even on stage and only like two people have seen this video, just sloppy on my couch this weekend and I was like, I, so I couldn't imagine on stage like, oh yeah, I don't want an audience to see that. Yeah, it's like depressing. <laughs> so they're like, what is he repressing? You're yeah. like, oh, nothing I'll deal with today. Yeah, it's like uh, at my birthday party, I was, before I even started drinking, I was pretending I was all fucked up on stage. I was like spitting and like, uh, uh, uh. but I was like, oh, this audience doesn't know if I'm actually this fucked up. It was in the afternoon. So I was like, sing a song and like spit on the stage and be, pretend I'm all fucked up. But I could feel the audience like be like, uh. and I was like, oh yeah. Cause it's kind of like dark if I'm super fucked up at like 2 PM. Yeah. I was like, so I, I hadn't started drinking yet. So I was like, oh, it was, it was funny to me. Cause I was like, I was sober at behaving that way. But I was like, but I'm really selling it. Like they think I'm like darkly fucked yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I gotta. I feel bad. And then I was like, Hey, what's up? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I was oh, like, Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, All right. So you get on stage. What, what year is this? This is probably where are you at? This is probably 2013 or 14. Okay. And I was in Boston at that point. I had a kid. 
No, no, no. It was before I had a kid. doesn't matter. But I was in Boston visiting some friends, and I hadn't, and I'd heard all about Boston comedy. In New York, you always hear people from other cities like, think about Boston comedy is we're the best, or Chicago comedy, where everyone's right, right, the right. best from their little region, and everyone's excited for you when you come to New York or LA and talk about another city that you're from. Right. Um, and so I went to the Boston thing and I was like told, it's like, this is the exclusive showcase show that, you know, and I don't know, I know someone got me, like I emailed the right person and I got on the thing. But before my friend Jay is a kid I grew up with. He like works in, he's like a construction, like hot, like a project manager. Like, I guess like the equivalent of like a producer on a TV show for, you know, like they fucking, I don't know, counts beans make sure his people show up on time but part of his job is he takes clients out so he has this gold card and like knows all the restaurants and can get it everywhere so we go to this restaurant before the performance and he's just like you gotta try this bourbon you gotta try this bourbon and it's like i'll be honest with you i don't even drink hard liquor and it when i did it all tastes kind of the same it's all good mm -hmm. but i don't really care like i'm like wow because as soon as you have yeah, a you're, few, not, you're, you're not like, like discerning yeah, <clears throat> so, nuanced bourbon taste. So we were like nuanced bourbon tasting, but like with the expense card, we just kept doing it and doing it. And just two friends from high school and my cousin Bob. And you had the show later that night. Yeah, the show later that night. Oh, and so yeah. the four of us are getting like <laughs> yeah straight plus, bourbon uh, plus other people too. Like other, <laughs> That'll put other lead in your like pencil. Do, I feel like other people from high school were like, "Hey, I'm here too." I'm like, "Oh, cool!" Like a bunch of people came out, and I was get and I started getting, getting sauced. I was getting sauce, and I spent all my <laughs> my comedy juice at the dinner. Oh, you're like, like ah! rah, rah, hey, now we're cool. <laughs> and when I got to the place, I'm like, I don't know these guys. And they're like, okay, you're going to go for them. I'm like, all right. <laughs> That sounds great, and like my eyes are like bloodshot. He smelled. Yeah, I was like Charles Bukowski by the time I got there, and all I remember going up there. Slurring my speech, bombing the first few jokes, and then I had two jokes that I remember. I, I, I thought of this the other day. Here's the joke. I have a joke that goes, um, an old joke that I said, uh, they say when you have sex with someone, you're having sex with everyone they had sex with, and everyone they had sex with, and on and on. And I, and I wondered if I've ever slept with Kevin Bacon, and that's a retired joke right. from the old days. Right. That's the setup and punch. And then there was another joke that I had that went like, um, I texted my old girlfriend not my old girlfriend. Well, she was my old girlfriend at the time. This is a true story. I actually texted you this. I was like, come over soon. I'm totally horny. <laughs> and then my friend Eric texted me back. It's like, uh, what's this text for? I'm like, oh, it was, was it for someone else. It's like, why? Are you busy? You know, and I go, why are you busy? And it's like, whatever the fucking joke was. Right, okay, right, I'm already right. fucking up my joke. Right, right, told right. in 12 years. Point is, I did the setup of the, of the Kevin Bacon joke. <laughs> They go, when you have sex with someone, you're supposed to have sex with everyone. And then I wondered, it's just like, uh, how quick can you get here? And everyone just like goes, what? And then I remember being up on stage, bombing so bad. I'm like, oh, I just ate through two jokes and my brain is on fire. And I was at that point, you know, when you start comedy, you write it all the time and you get into it and you're fucking into it and into it. And I was at like a lull moment. In yeah. stand-up, too, where I was kind of just rusty. like, oh, I, I'm, I'm a little rusty. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't writing new material. I was probably right. writing on the show at that point, so I think I was, like, fulfilled in mm -hmm. some level. But that's all I remember being like, ah, shit, and then it just got bad. But the best was at the end with my cousin, this one guy, Seth, who I knew from high school, and I kind of, we've always been frenemies. He just kind of was like, he'd never seen me before, and he saw me bomb, and... <laughs> <laughs> he kind of made a comment. Then my cousin Bob goes to me. He goes, you know, the stuff I've seen online's good. <laughs> <laughs> and that was his comment. And then, I, and then it just wasn't that fun of a night. It was like, put that in the bourbon files. Like, uh -huh. one, of the, one of the many reasons I'll just, like, not touch the bourbon. Wait, except, so... Except your f high school friends were there and a frenemy, a high school yeah, frenemy. One of them was like a frenemy. Like <laughs> one of them was like my buddy Jay's friend, and that's I was like, and he worst. watched me bomb, and that's all he knows me as. And like I, I think I like I like fought this guy before. Like I've like punched him in the face, <laughs> other times. He's like closer to enemy than frenemy. He's frenemy because we have the same friends. 
so yeah. like so socially nobody's gonna like they're like oh come on guys yeah but like as adults sometimes people just don't like each other it's just like one of those things like, yeah you gotta be like yeah yeah i just don't like him yeah and the you, and it's nothing he did uh other than my own internal like <laughs> yeah <laughs> i have an internal uh, with some people yeah it's life that's how human that's how the species works is that the most drunk you've ever been on stage? Probably, but what then was the most, when, when, like, when, we used to, when, when we used to do, <laughs> me and Victor Vernada would host that show, and like yeah. they would just like keep them coming, and they would You're just serve us beers. Like I didn't have any responsibilities at that time okay. in my life, <laughs> and so I have like blackout nights. <laughs> where I'm like, what? Are the, it was like still there, by the way, East there. Village. Frat boy, NYU frat boy dive bar, total kind of crap hole bar, right? Yeah. It's very much like Jaeger shots, Irish car bombs, all that like peer pressure drinking. Yeah. Like cheap Pure. liquor, like you got to do a brain eraser. It's like, I don't, I don't have to do one and I don't want to do it. What is it? Five ounces of Kahlua and five ounces of vodka back to back. I'm like. Yeah, wow. they had like nobody a, has to do that. They had it's like a gross. They had like a fishbowl Long Island iced tea, and they'd serve it. Yeah, like yeah, a fish bowl. Yeah, it's just like pound alcohol, no matter how disgusting it is. That's like their motto. And Long Island iced tea is just mixing all the liquors, which it's is like disgusting. Like, what the fuck is it that? It is the most disgusting. It's tequila, uh-huh. gin, what vodka, uh-huh. and whiskey, and Coca Cola. And sugar and lemon. They add sugar. They add sugar <laughs> they to add it. Syrup, simple syrup <laughs> to the Coca Cola thing. I don't it's think you should. The mix- most disgusting cocktail that's that there ever is. In I don't f- really know what. It, the only reason anybody talks about it is because it's so extreme and disgusting. It's extreme, it. and it was in a fish bowl. I don't know if that was. I think they had the fish bowl. I've been to a few bars that had the fish bowl of Long Island iced tea. That's this. And you everyone so put gross. a straw in, and you. I really, I think in college, my friend teaches an alcohol class. You should teach kids how to drink because they're just going to get sick and go to the hospital. They're Wait, going to do it the wrong way. There's an alcohol class? Yeah, my friend teaches an alcohol What class. is the alcohol class? What is the rule? History of alcohol, how to make cocktails, um, yeah, beer, wine. Does he teach about acid aldehyde? I don't know. Everyone's got to know about acid yeah, aldehyde. Very, yeah, they, so people should know about got, acid aldehyde. They should acid know about the aldehyde. risks. Yeah. The risk, the poison of alcohol breaking down in your liver, the feeling of yeah. hangover. If you took a shot of acid aldehyde, you'd have a hangover. Yeah. It was just like an instant hangover. Yeah. You know what? Hamilton Morris told me acetaldehyde smells like a person hungover. He's like, I can't even drink because I smell acetaldehyde in my lab and I like associate it with people that are like drunk, like that booze smell. That's the smell. It's uh, like pouring out of your skin. Ugh. Yeah. But they should teach, kids are going to drink. College kids are going to drink. You should teach them the right way to drink because that is the wrong way to drink. That's a crazy way to drink. Yeah, because culturally, when I was younger, it was always more and more. You had like yeah, the it was amount, very like it was like you, very co- competitive. Yeah, the amount you, can't you enjoy drink. It. Europeans enjoy it. Like Americans, like it's like the, it's like a race to. Yeah, it was like I remember in high school there was kids like uh, yeah I drank eighteen I had nineteen yeah. and you're like okay yeah did like, you tell me that one guy in your college with. I gave a girl 93 orgasms. Like, so that's like, yeah. you're like, come oh, on. Yeah, you yeah. Know? He taught me the way to go down to give a girl 93 orgasms, like one after another. That was the cringe. And I was like, and I was like, wait, you counted them? Like, one? One? A two? A three? A three. Ah! Oh, are you are you tracking your orgasms? Honey? He's got a clicker. Are you tracking them? Click, click, click. click, click, click. click. Uh, Here's uh, a clicker. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I didn't She's buy like, it. Seventeen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was crazy. And he had a method, and he told me about it. And uh, it's already too much. Yeah, I'm it's not, fine. It, uh, it, 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 but I'm not gonna get it. the method. Stupid. It's just normal. It's just some, yeah. Some well, basic, I'd, some I'd already command a roll out of that conversation off the top. Yeah. From the setup. I'd From the like, setup. Okay. Uh, pretty lousy bar. And uh, it's for kids. It's for like 21. It's for kids. It's, yeah. for, it's for people that don't know how to drink. So 
There's no ambiance. It's gr- gross in there. It's got to be filthy in there, right? It's filthy. <laughs> it stinks. Stinks like mildew. Filthy. They have like like black lights and Christmas lights. It's kind of like like dorm room decor. You know? Dorm room decor. Christmas lights. Surly floors. waiters and, and bartenders. Right? Like they're like miserable. Right? Yeah. They were like nice. Were they to okay? Me. They were well, okay. They were to nice you. to me because I was there every Maybe thir- okay. every Thursday or whatever the fuck it was. Every Thursday night I was there and they got to know me. So they liked me. Yeah. But the, I did fight a guy one time when I got Okay, yeah, so this is what I want to talk about. So you're on stage. You're hosting You're hosting a comedy show. It's like an open mic. You're hosting a comedy show. No, it was a book show. It's a book show. It okay. a book show. You're hosting this comedy show, up-and-coming comedians. It's you and Victor Renato. Yes. But there's rowdy frat boys. There's real frat boys. You're doing your stand-up. And what happens? So I think on this day, I didn't host. I said, I just want to do spots. And Victor brought me on stage, and I'm I'm not even I'm talking and I'm not even in my first joke. I'm like setting up my first joke, and this guy in a white hat, a Yukon hat, and that's often like a trigger for me, like a white Yukon hat, like or a Titleist hat, uh-huh. you know. And he's like, "You're not funny, man." And I was like, and "I just was like, just I like waved him off." Yukon University of Connecticut. University of Connecticut. That's just like the whitest, the, waspiest yeah, dudes of all time. Taking ever. that Metro North down. Okay. To got it. And he told me I wasn't funny, and I just kind of waved him off. So like sometimes you're not in the mood for crowd work either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're just like I just wanna, like I think I was like prepping for something. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah, here's yeah, this yeah. new I wanna get joke. I want to get this through. And I didn't even get to half. Like I didn't even get to the punchline, and he said it again. And I just started ripping into him, mm-hmm. and uh, I just like broke, and I and uh, I started accusing him of all sorts of stuff, making his <laughs> friends laugh. Like what? <laughs> tell me, pray tell. What did you? I say? told him he gave me a blowjob in the bathroom before, and you told me not to tell anyone. <laughs> I used his like perceived homophobia against him kind of thing, and I was just like, it was fine, it was great, and now he's all mad at me, yeah. and now he's acting like he doesn't even know me, and it was the opposite of how we left the bathroom, uh-huh, uh-huh. and I got into the weeds with that. Yeah, and his yeah, friends yeah. were laughing, and he got all like tongue in the cheek, not tongue in cheek, but you know that like when you're a pissed dude, when you're a pissed yeah. bro, and you like, stick your tongue in you're your not cheek, gonna mess and you're with like. Me. Whoa! This guy doesn't know who he's messing with. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like he did. He he was sure I didn't know who he was messing with. But I'm right. like, you can't have like the end. Yeah. Like you're already, like, that's not intimidating. So at the end, I just I just let I just laid into him for a long time until I turned the audience against him and everybody, including his friends, were laughing. And on the way out, I gave him like a double middle finger to the face, wow. to which he swung at me. I swung back, and then the bouncers pulled him off. And it was like it was like hardly a fight, you know, but it was like live in the moment. And then uh, afterwards, his friends bought me drinks. No they're, way! They're like, Pete's all right normally. I'm like, fuck Pete. <laughs> Whatever his fucking name was. <laughs> it's like, is he waiting for me? I'm like, is he waiting for me? Because I'm out of energy now. That was really so. His, his friends then went and bought me drinks, and they were like, they really thoroughly enjoyed it. And then the the hosts of the show after that they go that be, that got buzz, but there was a fight, and then it like started like the the audience changed because then it started turning into like more of like are they gonna are they gonna wrestle tonight too? <laughs> oh really? You yeah. Kind of, like, no. Brought some... And then there was like Elisa and Micah. I don't know. If they, I think they said that that was their show. I think they set up a fake fight a few weeks later. <laughs> And it didn't work. Uh, and it was like... That's kind of funny. Well, we learned that in production. Like, fake fighting... Looks fake. Looks fake. Unless, you know, the, the magic of cutting makes John Wick look good. If you just, like, watch raw footage of John Wick, you wouldn't be like, wow, he's fighting. But, uh, yeah, that that was a, a fun little thing. Bobby, with Eric Andre. Something about Mary Poppins? Something about Mary Poppins. Exactly. Oh, man. This is fun. I'm AJ Jacobs, and I am an author and a journalist, and I tend to get obsessed with stuff. And my current obsession is puzzles. And that has given birth to my new podcast, The Puzzler. Dressing. Dressing. Oh, French dressing. Exactly. (laughs) Oh, that's good. That's good. 
We are living in the golden age of puzzles, and now you can get your daily puzzle nuggets delivered straight to your ears for 10 minutes or less every day on The Puzzler, short and sweet. I thought to myself, I bet I know what this is, and now I definitely know what this is. This is so weird. This is fun. Let's try this one. <laughs> Listen to The Puzzler every day on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. That's awful, and I should have seen it coming. I'm Paul Muldoon, a poet who over the past several years had the good fortune to spend time with one of the world's greatest songwriters, Sir Paul McCartney. We talked through more than 150 tracks from McCartney's songbook, and while we did, we recorded our conversations. Yesterday. I mean, the fact that I dreamed the song yesterday leads me to believe that it's not just quite as cut and dried as we think it is. And now you can listen to our conversations in our new podcast, McCartney, A Life in Lyrics. It was like going back to an old snapshot album, looking back on work I hadn't thought much about for quite a few years. Listen to McCartney, A Life in Lyrics on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sonoro and iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network present Princess of South Beach, Season 2. Guess who's back? Did you miss me? The Calderons are back with a new season of lies, scandals, and skeletons in the closet. And uh, speaking of closets... And I am proud to take office as your first openly gay mayor. This season, it's all out in the open. What color are your pants? <laughs> okay, maybe not everything. These people look like they're mixed up in some really dangerous stuff. Starring X Mayo, Danny Pino, Andy Bustillos, Raul Esparza, Gina Torres, Alan Eisenberg, and more. Keep up with the most notorious family in Miami. Unravel the mystery with this new season of Princess of South Beach. Listen to Princess of South Beach as part of the My Cultura Podcast Network, available on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Bombing, bombing with Eric Andre. There's lots of ways to bomb, my friend. Yeah. There's so many ways. What bomb have you seen in real life? That was like the worst bomb you've ever seen. Now you we don't you, have to say you, the comedian's you, you've name. You've asked this but before. You can. <laughs> I've asked it before, and I'm asking it again, brother man. I liked this one guy, Al, who used to bomb, but he was self aware about it. Yeah, he was like, oh, he's like, oh, I almost had the audience, but then I bombed as usual. And I'm like, see, he could feel it, and I liked that guy because he. Did understood. you ever see? Somebody told me that Tracy Morgan used to go on stage, drop. Trow and turn around and spread his ass cheeks open to the crowd. No, you go, y'all want to see my birthmark? And then he dropped Trow and spread his ass cheeks to the crowd and show his raw asshole to the crowd. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> <laughs> That's just performance art. He did really? <laughs> y'all want to see my birthmark? I remember there was a comedian. That's was, wild, right? I, yeah, I was doing a show. <laughs> At the basement of comics, wherever that was called, Ochi's Lounge. Yeah. And then suddenly there was this mass exodus from this from the oh. from the big room upstairs. It was like, oh, arf, 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 arf. Somebody, I'm not gonna say names, a comedian, got up on stage, it was their show, and he goes, I'm gonna high five some titties, and he high fived oh. a woman's breasts. And uh it was like hurrah, hurrah. It was like it was like a big deal, and it was. And I remember I'm a high five some titties. I remember was asking. Setup. I remember asking the booker of the show, I'm like, "What happened?" And she was just like, "Ah, shit." Oh man, I remember there was like, <laughs> was like articles I'm about that. I'm giving a lot of refunds. Is what oh. I'm doing. Oh. I remember there were like articles about that show. Yeah, I was there, and I was like not in the room. I was below the room yeah, yeah, you're doing amazed, another man. show. Like you felt was, the stampede. You felt the stampede. But then it filled the room with people who just wanted to have a, who just came out to have a couple laughs, and then oh boy, some people f got their got their fix. It's the only thing I worry about this premise of this podcast. I don't want to, I don't want to Beetlejuice a bunch of like dark, bitter comics back into 
yeah. my life. You know what I, know, I mean? I know. <laughs> so I, maybe I should start changing it because because like that is a treacherous question. Like, what's the worst Bobby you've ever seen? That's not you. It's like, all right, well, I saw so and so because I've seen some really good comedians who I like and respect. Bomb, and I don't want to be like. Hey, yeah, <laughs> you know who you think is funny? Yeah, Sam this- J did a good job. She didn't say she's like comic A and comic B had a beef, and she like told this whole story about these guys that like that like went into a whole fist fight on stage, and it was. I think I just gotta like protect the innocent. One time I was in El Paso, I was moving out to L.A. and I did a show, and that Sunday we were just about to shoot the pilot. It was like the Saturday, I think we were like, we were shooting the pilot on like a Monday and I was in El Paso on Friday. The pilot of the Eric Andre show. But that Sunday I was on, uh, I did a bit on This American Life where I was trying to learn Spanish and I was like psyched about it. And I told the announcer that like, oh yeah, mention that uh, you can listen to me this Sunday on This American Life. And the announcer like went off script on like a 45 second over a minute tirade about NPR and like yeah we need to have our freedoms it was like pre last it was like post Bush sort of like rah rah like anger and it was like the club owner I was like I'm like what did you bring me on I told him after I'm like I'm like just don't mention it like I was like I was like like it was like I'm like you wait like, you being on NPR triggered him triggered him when he brought me on stage to like go on like uh, uh yeah he's gonna be on NPR or whatever uh communist uh, radio network uh yeah oh, was like, uh, that kind of shit? Like, wait, <laughs> what like why did you try to turn the audience on me oh, what a kid. at the <laughs> opening as you're going up as I'm going up oh, I'm like, I'm like on, yeah man. hey oh cool where's my latte mm, <laughs> you know like <laughs> that's like, not cool yeah it wasn't cool at all I'm gonna go to the bathroom all right. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Curry, everybody. Hey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Bombing, bombing with Eric Andre. Bombing with Eric Andre is brought to you by Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network and iHeart Podcast. Executive produced by Han Sani, Olivia Aguilar. Edited and sound designed by Andy Harris. And our art is by Dylan Vanderberg. If you want to confess to your own bombing moments or give us a shout out, go rate us five stars and drop a review on your podcast app of choice. Write about your own stories of bombing at life. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, you can also subscribe to Big Money Players Diamond to get exclusive bonus content with every episode and listen to all my episodes ad free. The guests on Bombing with Eric Andre were recorded before the SAG after strike. Bye bye. Dressing. Dressing. Oh, French dressing. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm AJ Jacobs, and my current obsession is puzzles. And that has given birth to my new podcast, The Puzzler. Something about Mary Poppins? Exactly. (laughs) This is fun. You can get your daily puzzle nuggets delivered straight to your ears. Listen to The Puzzler every day on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Hillary Clinton, back with a new season of my podcast, You and Me Both. On this show, I'll be talking to people I admire about one of my favorite subjects, getting things done. We'll hear from folks in positions of power, like Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries, but also writers and actors and really anyone who keeps doing the work. So please join me. Listen to You and Me Both on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What's up? This is Big Loon. Check out my podcast, It's Up There. Each and every Monday, It's Up There podcast brings a conversation for supporters and business leaders of the culture. From the podcast, business, music, and entertainment deals, we have an in-depth dialogue with a level of understanding for everyone. It's Up There podcast sees through the smoke and mirrors within the industry while delivering a perspective that's one of a kind. Laugh, cry, and soak in game with every episode. Listen to It's Up There podcast on the Black Effect Podcast Network. iHeartRadio your app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.